Welcome to Remarkable Lives. Today is March 28th, 2008. We have with us a very wonderful person who is truly a remarkable woman. My name is Betsy Martin, and today we have with us Eva Deska Garnett. I'm 94 years old, and I love it, except for senior moments. Do you have senior moments? I sure so do. do I. I sure uh. do. I can't remember people's names as easily as yeah. I did when I was younger. That's true of all of us. Yes. Yeah. You are a vibrant, passionate person. Where do you get your passion from? I love what I do. I, I, that's why I do it, because I love to do it. So I love dancing, I love teaching, I love writing. I love being with people, I love helping people. And sometimes I have to say, may I make a suggestion? Because people don't like that. So they say, oh yes, go ahead. So I spread my largesse around. <laughs> Wonderful. Your exuberance for life inspires me, I know that. Uh, now you are probably one of the few people in our Laguna Woods Village uh, here in California who is in the beginning, the beginning of the modern dance movement. Exactly. And uh, mo modern dance grew out of ballet and, and breaking out of the mold. Revolved it against ballet. Tell us about Isadora it. Duncan was the first one. That beautiful courageous woman, you know, I'd love to talk about her, but I won't. Okay. A little bit is fine. Is all right. Well, if I talk about her, I can't talk about Martha Graham, Doris Humphrey. You'll Charles talk about one. all of them, briefly. Okay. I was with Doris Humphrey. Well, I was at the Denishon School, which is really an academy, that many people who knew anything about dancing held in great esteem. They were the top uh, combination for dance and we learned every kind of dancing we learned ballet dancing we learned Vigman dancing that was the German influence we learned Hawaiian jazz I said that and if I skipped anything I'm sorry but anyway we learned we learned almost every kind of dancing there was and Doris Humphrey and Martha Graham and Charles Weidman, the great American leaders of dance. And there was Tamiris, but I don't know much about her, uh, who, who actually developed the modern dance in the United States. And they are our great pioneers. And they followed the revolt against the class Classicism uh, of France and, uh, of course, Russia. Uh, let me think. Yes, and and Picasso was amongst the movement that started it in the arts. And then there was Bauhaus, I believe, in Germany. Anyway, I'm through with that. Okay, Next now, question. Yes, yes, Kaval, yes, Kadal, yes, Kadal, yes, Kadal is one of the dances that I composed in response to what was going on in the world. Those, that, the world was my palette, and I composed whatever I felt was significant. Yiskadal was a dance of the dead. It was done to a poem, and it was about going back into, and it was, a, Yiskadal is a Hebrew word for the prayer of the dead. And I took it back to the early years of 
the uh, the Hebrew people in the in the biblical times when they were farmers and I had a scythe I mean a real scythe I don't know how much it weighed but it was plenty and I started as a farmer and then my wheat should I stop? No, 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 you go. Stop. Keep going. Uh, the wheat fields dried up and we and and we moved to find sustenance. And then I go through all the different experiences of the Jewish life until we come to Hitler. And that's when I that's the Yiskadal part of it. I even do some of the wonderful happy uh, Jewish dance movements, you know, of praise to God and the Lord and will keep us and you know, all of that will take care of us. Now you have pictures of that that oh, yeah. are now on display in Paris. That's correct. It's called Dance is a Weapon. Dance is a Weapon. D dance. Dance is a Weapon. If I'm against, I did a dance called Poison Pen. This pen for hire, this pen for hire. And I remember that was, I did that when Pegler was a, uh, was a, a columnist spewing his hate. And lo all through my years, I did uh, that kind of dance. And ultimately, you have now earned a place in the National Museum of Dance Hall of Fame. That's true. In Saratoga Springs, Well, let's New not York. overdo it. Not I, but the new dance group, okay. of which I was a teacher and a performer on Broadway and all of that. Wonderful. Your mother had a big influence in you, uh, I know. Now, oh, she, yeah. she and your father came from Russia, and they were introduced over in the old country, got married here. Uh, Tell us a little bit about them, their names, and just how, how My it father was Louis, my mother was Berta, our second name was Flugich, and those are the only names that stayed stable, because my name went through a number of different changes as the family got after my mother to change my name because I was named after my grandmother and my cousin was named after my grandmother. My grandmother died at 28, my cousin died at 28. They wanted me to fool the angel of death. So I had to change my name from Evelyn to Eva because my father called me Evie. Then, you want to know the rest of the I changes? Do, I do. Oh boy, it's not important, but it's, well, the re record. it's revealing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was Evelyn until, what am I doing with my hands? I was Evelyn until I uh, started dancing professionally with Gluck Sander, who had the only uh, modern, he was a modern dancer. And uh, he had the only repertory company in New York for dance, for modern dance. And so, when he heard my name, Evelyn Blugach, he said, hmm, how would that look on a marquee? I said, I guess not very good. He said, well, change it. So I changed it to Eva Deska. I tried to get all the letters. And then Eva Deska. Oh, yes, well, and I used that when I was in the Follies, and I used it all my professional time. When I got married, I still used it, but for family things, I used my husband's name as well. So that was Eva Deska Garnett. And my first book was under that name, Eva Deska Garnett. And what was that first book? Oh, it was called Movement is Life. Do you believe that? Can you think of anything that can be done, even sleeping? Everything's moving inside. That's we're true. breathing, we're swallowing, our hearts are going. And then, of course, what can you do without movement? Can you take one step? No. Can you move your shoulders? Can you say hello? <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Well, um, 
all this dance preparation. Oh, there was another name. No. Oh, after my first husband died, I got involved with someone else and uh, we married. I didn't think we should marry, but we even, oh, this is interesting. Go. We already had our invitations for Eva Desca Garnett and David Rosen in a relationship. That's what I was for. On the way from, the, from making those invitations, I thought about it, and I thought about his family, and I thought about how miserable they would like to make me be. So I said, let's go back and get married. <laughs> now, as I, I think I get, get from you, is it, it was a very happy marriage. It was a very constructive marriage. We were very powerful people. And he, an artist, also. Oh, he was a mag he was a magnificent artist, and that's that, that's one of the things that really makes me cry often. I have those beautiful Shakespearean paintings up on my wall, tremendous paintings. And yeah, so yeah, I was married to David Rosen, and it was a good marriage, a very good marriage. Good. You, you shared an article with me that said, recent research shows that there's, there's a gene in, in certain people that brings out the, their musical talent, their athletic talent, their dance talent. It seems like you have that gene. Oh, I came out into the world dancing. So I used to say I danced in my mother's womb. I don't have to say that anymore. <laughs> Science supports me. <laughs> That's great. And speaking about research and learning and books, you are you are an author, and at about eight, about age fifty, you went back to school and earned a master's degree. Tell us about that transformation. Well, there had to be a reason for me to go back to school at that age, and the reason was that I had already received two grants, two federal grants, to teach what I had developed at the end of the, of the 1950s. Well, I developed it a little earlier, but, and I called it geriatric calisthenics because that Calisthenics was the word for exercise in those days, and geriatric was the only other word for older people. So I, I did geriatric calisthenics, two grants, training people who were already related to programs involved with older people, um, homes for the aged. They, it was called Homes for the Aged at that time. And there was a beginning of a movement of people working for legislation for senior adults. And so, and also I was favored with the uh, approval or enthusiasm of one of the people in the, uh, I think it's called the State Department of, they, they gave the licenses to the convalescent homes and the, uh, convalescent and the old age homes and so then the people involved in those businesses got behind me and I got these two grants and so the people that came to study with me were already either recreation people or activity people and each of them got jobs at the end of these programs. Now, why did I tell you that? Because you, at age 50, you went back to oh, your master's. Oh, so I wrote an, oh, first I wrote a manual for these people. And so that was geriatric calisthenics. And, uh, and Arthur got, Arthur uh, got yes. figured oh, yes. in here. By that time, by that time, there was a, a world movement to improve the lives of senior adults. And I was teaching at the West Side Jewish Community Center. And he came back and he said, Eva, how about teaching a class for older people? 
And I said, I'd love it. My mother always, my mother had been study, taking classes with me in the regular classes, and I had already asked her, Mom, I think you better sit in a chair and do it. So I already had a little bit of that feeling. And of course, my mother was always my prom, my prime love and concern. And I thought this would be for all the other mothers and fathers. And it immediately had about 10 or 15 people in the 50s, imagine, in the 50s. And just to highlight it, when there were athletes coming into the building, right next to us, a four-wall handball thing. So one of them took a little detour, peeked into our room, and said, oh, he said, you're, da you're moving, you're exercising? And that's what they thought of us. So having, having done all that and having trained people, um, I decided that it would be a good idea if I had a formal education. All of my education was self, uh, uh, self-induced, I guess, or yeah, self-learning. So yes, so I started at uh, Los Angeles Community College, graduated summa cum laude. Woohoo! <laughs> and went from there to, at the time it was the state, um, L.A. State College, mm -hmm. and then it, it passed its, uh, passed the requirements to become a university. Certificate. So certified. by the time I was graduated, that's good English, was graduated. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a university, Very so good. that's where I gra was graduated from. And I, at, at, by that time, my reputation was fairly widely known because there were already many exercise classes that I didn't call it geriatric calisthenics anymore. I call them different names. I, Real good fitness, I called it. Oh, in the beginning, I, I, I went through a bunch of names as the people be, more people came into the program and more people who were independently, independently living and taking care of themselves, I made the names more appropriate until finally, now I call my exercise program Body Brain Fitness, which is what I'm doing now. And you're still and you're still teaching now at Irvine. I'm teaching at Irvine Valley College. Valley College. And you, you teach now one day a week? Yes, I teach one day a week and I'm writing all the other days a week. And we have a clip of some of the uh, classes that you do and the yeah. music that you have and your, your your wild outfits that go with it and yeah. you you are a I hoot. think I think I wore this one for that, yeah. I could think yeah. so. You know I'm 93. If you go back 93 years, you will know no radio, no television, no, no entertainment other than the family. So that's what we had. We had a wonderful extended family that got together regularly. And the children did the entertaining, and I was the dancer. Well, I love to, I do. I created a dank tango. I called it Eva's Tango. But my tango has a comment to make. It's coy, it's you still dancing. I danced, I danced professionally. And I, I, I don't know, you probably would have never heard of it, but Ruth St. Dennis was the fountainheader from which all modern dance came. And modern dance means Martha Graham, Doris Humphrey, Charles Weidman, and Vig Vigman, of course. And the fountainhead of all of that was, Ruth, uh, was uh, Isadora Duncan. My father wouldn't let me go to see Isadora Duncan. She danced naked. Not so, not so. She danced barefooted. And her leg showed. I danced in the Zigzag Club. I wasn't one of the long stemmed beauties, and I wasn't one of the chorus girls. I was in a specialty number, and we did uh, 
I guess they would have called it exotic dancing. What advice would you give young dancers if you had to give them any advice? Dance. You don't have to pr perform, but you don't have to, you know, have your name in lights. Dancing is ecstasy. Unless maybe you're on your toes. <laughs> what advice would you give your students? Come to class early and come as often as you can. <laughs> they keep me vital. I get such joy. I get so much love. I get so much creativity that, I, you know, that, and I do a lot of improvising. I, someone, oh, one of the people in this class said, I admire you, you should excuse the expression, because you create yourself every day. That's what I do. An hour in bed exercise, an hour in bed, six o'clock to seven. Then I do walking where I use numbers and I sing and do things like that and uh, dance. A lot of improvisation. All right, a young woman, this is our joke. A young woman was taking an afternoon nap after she woke, she told her husband, I just dreamed that you gave me a gorgeous, expensive pearl necklace for Valentine's Day. What do you think it means? You'll know tonight, he said. So she was so excited. That evening, her husband came home with a small package and gave it to his wife. Delighted, she opened it and found a book titled The Meaning of Dreams. Ha! 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 Oh, 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 rock to the front and rock to the back, rock to the front and rock to the back, and here comes Marge and here comes Liz and rock to the front. Stand up and ha 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 <laughs> Don't you think it's important that I was the elected the part-time teacher of the year? Uh, year in 2007. Part-time teacher of the year of the Emeritus Program in 2007. That's a wonderful, wonderful compliment for Thank a very you. vibrant, passionate woman about her dance. I want to get back to Arthur Godfrey and how that how that transpired? I think. By that time, tell by me that, that little story. Yeah, by that, someone in the class knew a person on Arthur Godfrey's program and mentioned it, so I was invited, and I took both my classes. I had an exercise class and I had a dance class, and uh, so. We had a demonstration on his pro afternoon program, and I think most of the people who would at all be interested in this program knew Arthur Godfrey. He was one of the big names at, I guess it was a 12 o'clock program. And of course, so the first class was the exercise class, and they were the movement classes where we do all kinds of wonderful things moving, relaxing, and twisting, and energy. That's OK. I moved my chair. It's OK. It's OK. OK. And energy, and dynabands, yes. all these wonderful <laughs> things that we were doing. Not dynabands. We weren't doing those at the time. And you know, leg things, all kinds of wonderful leg things. And then, after that, yeah, I. Yeah, then then we did the uh, the uh, jazz dance thing. And, and what did Arthur say yeah, to you? Yeah, yeah. At first, Arthur 
looked at the exercise people and he picked this woman. I knew her name until three days ago. <laughs> Might come back. And he asked, why do you take Eva's classes? She said, oh, before I took those classes, I was in so much pain. And then I started taking Eva's exercise classes. And with God's help, I feel wonderful. So he turned to me and he said, well, Eva, with a partner like that, you can't lose. <laughs> he was referring to you. Well, he was referring to the partner. Oh, the partner like God. Of course. Oh, I misunderstood. You misunderstood. That story. Oh, it's <laughs> okay. Well, even even better story. So, with with uh, with a self self help, and with dependence on your higher power, God, That's whatever, right. you can do anything. Well, it wasn't self-help, it was professional help. Okay, so the motivation for, came from yourself. from a directed teacher who knew how to motivate, who knew how to motivate older people so that it was joyous, we could laugh, we could joke, and we could move. And they didn't have to do any, oh, I have to tell you, this is important for, for the audience. When I was training people, I would go with the trainee from one place to another. And I always started my class, and still do, with a joke. And I started, well, there was this older woman of 75, and one lady raises her hand, she says, I'm 75 and I'm not old. I said, oh, what is old? 80. The next trainee class I went to, I said, there was this older, elderly woman, 80 years old. Yes, and I knew their names by now, I think. Uh, yes, what is it? I'm 80 years old, and I'm not old. What is old? 90. Thank you. <laughs> then, you, I think you're ahead of me already. 90 years old, I'm not old. What's old? 100. Well, I think this is revealing of many, many things that what you are inside biologically, what you are biologically is what you are, regardless of the numbers and the date of birth. And actually, gerontologists consider the date of death the time when you're old. Yes. Because yes. your biology yes. is old. So, what does that say? You're as old as you feel? That's nice to know. <laughs> yes. That's a great story. Um, you were also awarded uh, by the Arthritis Association. Yes. What, what, I had, well, I had a Certificate of Excellence from the Arthritis Foundation. I taught for the Arthritis Foundation, I think, about 10 years. But I'm not going to badmouth the Arthritis Foundation, but they made changes in the rules that made it not only more time and more paperwork, and I think it was less pay. So I uh, volunteered to stop. I see. You volunteered to stop. Yeah. And then you were teaching classes, speaking of volunteered to stop, you were teaching classes here in Laguna Woods Village. Oh, I didn't volunteer here. No, I and you were paid. Oh, but yes. then, then they said you couldn't get paid and oh, live here. So that's when you right. went off campus, so to speak, to Irvine Valley College. Oh, no. I was at Va Irvine Valley was College. there as at, well as here. Yeah. Well, I was at Saddleback my first 10 years. Oh, I see. And then I came to Irvine Valley, and then things happened in the uh, administration there where they made changes, and then I no longer taught at Saddleback. Okay, but you were, you were teaching here at the village. It was oh, yes. It called Leisure World oh, then. Oh, yes. But then you had to stop that because oh, yes. of some administrative... I taught exercise, uh, uh, chair exercises, <laughs> belly dancing, <laughs> Jazz, well, and then I taught a pope, uh, what did I call it? A, what did the Scandinavians have for food? Uh, oh, dear. You can't think of it, and you're younger than I am. See, a senior moment. Yeah, all right. Um, 
baklava. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, forget it. Anyway, uh, I taught a variety of dance, of dance techniques, and modern dance, and uh, and improvisation. It was just wonderful, and it you, was just very sad. No, you I think I. Yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you developed the dance troupe here in, oh, of course. in what the was Emeritus. Leisure World. And, the and another, another person from our Remarkable Live series, yeah. Sue Ramos yeah. Nadell, yeah. Uh, yeah. who you also danced with in the, oh, in the, yes, in in the, the Ziegfeld Follies, Follies in and the 30s. Almost forever. And you were part of the specialty dancers. In, with the, with the, in, the, in the Ziegfeld in Follies, the, there were 16 of us. And Fanny Bryce was in the company, <laughs> and uh, and she did a modern dance to, uh, satire. Oh, did she? Not not in not in our uh, Ziegfeld Follies, but previous. But oh, I wish. Oh, I can do it sitting down. Yeah. She did an imitate. Uh, she did an Indian dance, and she said, and you know, she was Jewish, and she used the Jewish accent. Look at me, one look will do. Whoops, I'm an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, an American Indian. Okay, yeah. got it. So, uh, so Sue Ramos Nadell and Eva Deska Garnett. Yeah, that's correct. No, my professional name was Eva Deska until uh, after oh, okay, I okay, married. The two of you did this troupe, and I think yes. one of our people here in the video studio right now, Carly Lutzo participated in your dancing along the way. Oh, yes. Uh, she did the belly dancing. And some people like... Um, I was aching to say it, but I needed... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. She was in the belly dancing. Yeah. yeah. That's a fun kind oh, of dance, yeah. isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I could move my hips, I would do that. <laughs> Yeah, hey baby, you're wonderful. Um, Thank you. <laughs> and you're working on a book now. Oh yeah. Well, it's I don't know whether it's going to be two books or one book. The first book that I, the first part of it is called Body Brain Fitness. No. My body. Our bodies are us. Excuse me. Our bodies are us. And a subtitle is. Let me think if I can think of it. Something like uh, cues to help us through the pitfalls of aging with a 94-year-old gerontologist. That's a subtitle. And the second part of it is Body Brain Fitness, which I've been teaching for some time for Irvine Valley College under, under the uh, physical emeritus program in the physical education department. Now we have to uh, recognize that you also combined uh, having children with a dance career. So you tell us your, your children's names uh, the, the, when they were born and how, how, you, how you worked that all in. Oh yeah. My older daughter is Janice. My younger daughter was Polly. And uh, apparently, part of the genes were in them too. But they were very unhappy because no matter how good they were, they say, oh, her mother's a dancer. And you know how that could feel, taking away. Respect is what Maslow tells us is a necessity of life. And she fe they felt that they didn't have the respect they deserved. Nevertheless, they were, well, Janice was proud of me. I don't think Polly mentioned me much. <laughs> yeah. Now, Janice uh, is your older daughter. She was born in 1948. She lives in Berlin, Germany, right now. And Polly was born in 1953. And unfortunately, she had health issues and she died. Um, so, how did that affect How did you? I work with my children? Yeah. Well, I don't think it's strange to hear. I think most of the people do that were middle class. They did a job, they did the home, and they did the children, and they did 
the social uh, amenities, and that's what, why we're so long-lived. We had a challenge, and we kept, we kept adjusting to challenges, and that's what keeps the brains growing. Interesting. But uh, I think that uh, the girls, maybe the girls, though, that they could have had more time. I don't know. It's but a, I have the, I, I do have the deep love of my older daughter, and, and she didn't love me often. <laughs> I had seen a, a videotape that your husband, David Rosen, took of the two of you dancing in the kitchen. And you would do a step, and you'd say, Jan, what? Show me this, show me that. Um, and she, she, she measured up, and she was dancing, and then you copied her. It was a very nice interchange oh, yeah. between the two of you. We, it was an improvisation. It was an impro a choreographic improvisation for the both of us. So it requi improvisations require much more than, of course, any composition. And she let me be the leader so I could talk and so I could direct it. It seemed like a very loving, a loving relationship between yeah. the two of you. Yeah. Oh, when we're dancing, we love each other. <laughs> That's the common, the common thread. Uh, art. 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 Art from the heart. <laughs> I yeah. like that. Art from the heart. Um, and just, just, um, just um, for the record, um, your your mom was, I believe, 81 when she died. Um, so she was, for her age, she was fairly uh, at that had time. a long life at for that, that time. time. Um, she was uh, born in Russia, as well as your father, Louis, Louis uh, in the Ukraine under the Tsar, and they came to this country in the. Uh, early 1900s. Um, they came to New York. They had relatives there. And then you, we never even mentioned where you grew up. Where, uh, they came to the where? And New York, New York. It's a wonderful town. Hey, we harmonized. <laughs> I love that. They came to the Bronx. And that's where you grew up. Yeah. So you're a, you're a New York girl. How come you don't have a New York accent? Oh, I must have a New York accent because I remember once we were having a dinner. This was the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship was having a dinner for the uh, the nurse, the health program of Laguna Beach, and we were contributing our money to that program, and uh, so. The, this was a dinner that we were paying for and that it was being donated. Right. So everybody was going there and they wanted to combine some food and they said, the man said, no, we can't combine it. And I said, well, I would like to have it. I said, how come you're giving it to me and you didn't give it to them? You're a New Yorker. <laughs> So you can take the girl out of New York, but you can never fully take the New York out, out of the girl. girl. I yeah. resemble that remark somewhat, too. Getting back to your mom, wonderful oh, influence please. in your life. Finally. She, 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 you have a couple of stories. It looks like we yeah, don't have we, much we, more time. Right, we, we've got to get, we've got to get mom. my mom. Now she, her, her profession was a, uh, she did orthopedic custom foundations, women's oh. corsets, and she made brassieres, and she was a seamstress. No, she was okay. not a seamstress. Okay, she was not a seamstress, but she did these... She had her training in the Ukraine. She apprenticed there, and when she came here, she was a, a orthopedic. This was a time when all women wore foundation garments. Yeah. I'm thinking about what all women would protect. And when, when, the, uh, when the women got the vote in 1920, 
1921, mm -hmm. I think it is. 20, yeah, 20, yeah. My mother was the first one to cut a man, her hair to a man. Her That's gorgeous right. hair, ooh. So she was one of those modern oh, women. my mother she, was, she yeah, bobbed her on hair. the cutting edge. Oh, she was on the cutting edge. Yeah, just like yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, so mother came here, but she didn't pursue her own, uh, her own profession. She was, well, first of all, she was an immigrant and didn't even know the language. And my father, who did come with a certain amount of money, uh, came to relatives who were in the laundry line. So that's what she got into. So that the laundry she, line? Yeah. What's that? What's that? Laundry, laundry. Now there are uh, uh, mechanical laundries, but are, oh. that, I guess that's history, isn't it? Laundry, laundry stores where people came to have their laundry done. Oh, kind of like fluff and fold today. Mm, well, it isn't like it, but that you that brought was your the laundry modern. to a place and they yes, did it for you and you picked it up. That's right. Okay. That's right. But uh, tell the story about <laughs> you were in school, oh. high school, and the, you got sent down because you didn't have a proper undergarment on. You gave it away. Well, no, I, you, have to ex you have to make a theater. Well, all right. First, I have to say, my mother had very interesting ideas and interesting talents, and I thought they were wonderful, and I just adored her. And however, I did have some uncomfortable moments. Being sent home from school because of my mother's proclivities of individuality expressed through her daughter. So this was the final one. One was, I've got to just go through a few. One was that I was sent home because my mother made May Day when you dance around the Maypole. We had to wear white. And my mother made ivory satin, and she made pantaloons maybe five years before it came in style. And when I went there, they said, go home and get dressed in a white dress. I don't know if I ever got back. That was the first. The second was when I was graduated from high school. We had to sew our own dresses, and I'm sure many of the people who are watching this today had the same experience. And we had, to, we had to sew our own dresses, not mama, not sister or anybody. Well, I sewed my own dress until it came to the stays. Stays are what st stay stabilizes gatherings. It's a very difficult thing to do. And, and I must have had, a, and I had astigmatism besides. I didn't know that. And the day before, we had to bring our, our, our graduation dresses to the teacher, my mother insisted that I go to bed and she would finish the stays. I begged her not to do it. I begged her not to do it. It's 12 o'clock, go to bed, I'll finish it, and then you can take it to school tomorrow. Well, so when they called up each individual student to show the dress, they called me up and I brought it, and she looked at it, and she probably looked at the stays first thing, and she said, uh, did you make this dress all by, all by yourself? I said, no. She said, did your mother help you? I said, yes. She said, I want you to go down to the assistant principal. And I got a, a bowling out, and I said, you teach us to tell the truth, and when we tell the truth, you punish us. You're a hypocrite. So that was the way I was brought up. This one, oh wow. Wait, I had just moved to this high school. And you had I'm, gone to many. Well, I went to three different ones, but I'm not, I don't remember, I think it was possibly the first high school that I went to for a short time. And the teacher called me up to the desk and said, would you please go down and see the assistant principal? And I did, and she said, please don't come back here until you wear a proper brassiere. Well, why wasn't I wearing a proper brassiere? Because my mother, who is a professional, said it breaks down the pectoral muscles. That was, the, that, was that story. That's a horrible, so, horrible so that's thing. what I was brought up on. 
to be whatever I believed. We are what we believe. We are what we do. We are what we believe. And just to wrap up, a very fascinating, long, passionate life of Eva Deska Rosen. Uh, no, Eva Deska Garnett Rosen. What would you like to leave with our, our wonderful folks watching us? Your philosophy of life. Wow. First of all, you've gone this far. You must have done something good. Now, we all have that senior moments waiting for us in the wings, and we don't admit it. But let's admit it and see what we can do about it. And what we can do about it, the scientists, the gerontologists, the physiologists, the, oh, by the 21st century, there must be about six or seven scientific people working on the problems of aging. They're in, there's all kinds of experiments. There. And so the message is, do something you love, do something new, even if it's hard to do. Do something new, even if it's hard to do. Now you'll remember that. Do something new, if, even if it's hard to do. Do something and new, even, even if, if it's, it's hard, hard to do. do. Like, Exercise, and you'll love it because it'll refresh, and refresh your brains, it'll give you strength, it'll give you strength enough so you won't fall. One of the reasons we fall is, first of all, we don't really know how to walk properly, and you learn that in an exercise class, and the other reason is we may not have the strength. So, exercise and do new things. New things stimulate the sleeping neurons, that's scientific for brain cells, and all of the things required for remembering, which is association of different ideas to help you remember. And now this could start a whole new thing, so I better... <laughs> Eva, it has been truly a blessing and a privilege for me to get to know you better by all the, all the talking we've done prior to today. Um, I just wish I could Can not only live as long. you over and give me a hug? <laughs> I will. I want to live not only as long as you, but as passionately as you. And everybody out there, 94 is not old. We've broken the mold. <laughs>